Number four, a study of the rate of dimerization of C4H6 gave the data shown in the table. We have a balanced equation of two C4H6 yields, a C8H12, and here is the data that we collected. So we have a time value and we have a molarity. Letter A, determine the average rate of dimerization between zero seconds and 1,600 seconds and between 1,600 seconds and 3,200 seconds. Okay, so we know that a rate is always going to be a change in concentration divided by the change in time. So they did give us a concentration value and they gave us a time. So a rate is the change, that triangle means change. It's the rate of, well, the rate is equal to the change in your concentration, and in this case it's C4H6, divided by some type of change in time. Now, let's figure out these rates. The first one we're going to do is from zero seconds all the way to 1600 seconds. Now, that's beautiful because we have zero second information right here and we have 1600 second information right next door. So for this one, I don't have to draw a graph or anything because I have the information right here. Now, at this zero seconds, I know that that concentration was 1.00 times 10 to the negative second molarity. And I know that at 1600, the concentration changed to 5.0 times 10 to the negative third. Now remember what a change means. Generally speaking, remember a change is a final minus initial. So I'm just going to expand this uh, division sign. And we're just going to say that it's the concentration of the C486 minus the C486, concentration of C486. And it's always final minus initial. And it's divided by the certain time minus a time. And the times have to go together as well. Final minus initial. Now on our first uh, example here, we went from zero to 1,600. So the final is going to be the 1,600 values, and your initials are gonna be starting at the zero. So we're gonna use this general formula now to just find out the rate. So I'm gonna make a big um, fraction. The final molarity is the 5.04. So five, or maybe I'll do this as, whoop, I'm just gonna do this as two, We'll put the minuses in here already. So I'll do the blues on the top on the top for the final. So it'd be 5.04 times 10 to the negative third. And that corresponds with the final time of 1600 minus your initials. We know that the initial time is zero and the initial concentration was 1.00 times 10 to the negative second. Let's just extend this a little bit more. And now let's just clean it up, right? And what I can do is I can just, wee, beautiful. So let's keep going. The bottom is gonna be the same, right? 1600, 1600 minus zero, 1600. And then we'll do 5.04 times 10 to the second comma is the EE button. That means times 10 to the and then I'll do negative three minus 1.00 times 10 to the negative two. Okay, and I get a negative value, which is totally fine. Um, 0 0.00496. Okay. And now we're just gonna take that value and divide it by 1600. There it is. So we have the average rate of dimerization 
for the 0 to 1600, and maybe what I'll do is can I bring this a little bit closer? Eh, we'll do it down here. So 3.1 times 10 to the negative 6. Negative let me just let me just write this over. Negative 3.1 times 10 to the negative sixth. And just know that the unit is molarity over seconds. Because molarity on top, seconds on the bottom, right? Molarity over seconds. Um, you can't cancel those two units out. So that would be the first rate. Now just know that the negative just means that whoever we're using, whatever values we're using, this is disappearing. So a negative rate always means that you have a slope going downward. Basically, the rate is a slope. And it's C486, that's the reactant. So this has to be disappearing. It has to be going down while the product is increasing. So it makes sense. You could always kind of check uh, your answers just to make sure you're in the right realm of your signs. So now we just have to do the same thing for the second bit of data, 1600 seconds all the way to 32. Well, we have the 1600 data already, right? That's the 5.04 times 10 to the negative third molarity. And now the 3200 is going to be 3.37 times 10 to the negative third molarity. Okay, your initial now is the 1600 seconds. And your final is the 32. Final minus initial. Let's do it. So we have a, a very big division sign. We got a subtraction on going on both sides. Let's do the finals first. So 3.37 times 10 to the negative 3 over 3,200 minus your initials, 1,600 goes on the bottom, and 5.04 times 10 to the negative third goes up on the top. Okay, let's just simplify this. 32 and 16, I believe is 16, right? 32? Let's just plug this in, 16. Yep, and then 3.37 times, oh boy, second comma. 3.37 times 10 to the negative third minus 5.04 times 10 to the negative three. We get 0 0.00167. Let's take that value divided by the time value, and there you go. It seems like the rate is slowing down, and that makes sense. Over a time period, you know, as you're going into longer and longer time periods, the rate is going to slow down. That means that you barely have, you know, C4H6 left, and you've converted mostly into C8H12. So we got negative one point, I guess we'll do three sig figs, eh. I mean technically two, 1.0 times 10 to the negative six. Unit for rate is always molarity over second. And that is the final answer. So the rates are different, but that's okay. And we still have a negative value and that checks out because it's still disappearing. It's on the reactant side. So it should be a negative value. Now, I just want to point it out there that the average rate, or any rate in general, a rate by math purposes should always be a positive value. Now, calci and math versus chemistry, unfortunately the calculator does not understand chemistry. It will compute mathematics beautifully and perfectly and will spit out a negative value. And like we said, that this negative value means that the uh, C486 is disappearing. And yes, that is totally correct. But as far as now giving out the answer, the rate should always be a positive value. So let's get rid of this disappearing and get rid of the negative. 
because it's just going to be basically the absolute value. But you can use that information to just make sure you did it right. But if you're giving a rate answer, that rate should always be positive. So let's just get rid of this and the negative and call it a day. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. So the rate would specifically be 3.1 times 10 to the negative 6 similarity per second. The negative just meant that it was decreasing. So just know the difference. If they're asking for a rate, Calci may give you a negative value, but just it's always the absolute value. But use that negative to just put the context in there. I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to helping you in more questions. I love talking to you guys in the comment section. I try to get back to you as much as I can throughout my spare time. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being part of the community and for the support. The channel wouldn't be here without you guys. So you keep watching the videos. We'll keep making them. And we'll take over the world. <laughs> thank you so very much. And honestly, you guys rock. I hope you're having a great day out there, okay? All right. Stay safe. Be well. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.